The iron gates screeched open, a rusty lament that scraped against my nerves like fingernails on a chalkboard. Mrs. Blackwood, a wisp of a woman dwarfed by the imposing oak doors, ushered me into the house. Shadows clung to the corners of the cavernous foyer, obscuring the grand staircase that climbed into the gloom above. The air hung heavy with dust motes dancing in a single shaft of moonlight that speared through a grimy high window. Timmy's a good sleeper, Mrs. Blackwood chirped, her voice thin and strained, like a melody sung off-key. Just put him down at eight, and he'll be out until morning. Eight o'clock felt a lifetime away in this mausoleum of a house. The Blackwoods lived in a sprawling Victorian mansion on the outskirts of town, a place that seemed to swallow the very light of day. Timmy, a cherub-faced eight-year-old with eyes too big for his face, clutched his teddy bear tighter and offered me a watery smile. I forced a chipper tone, ruffling his hair. Don't worry, Timmy, we'll have a fun night. Movie marathon and popcorn for dinner. Sound good? He nodded enthusiastically, then scurried up the grand staircase with all the boundless energy of a child exploring a forbidden castle. Mrs. Blackwood apologized profusely for the state of the house, been meaning to clean for ages, she muttered, a nervous tremor evident in her voice, before bustling out with promises of a hefty paycheck that felt a little too generous considering the circumstances. As the oak door shut with a resounding thud, the silence pressed down, suffocating, the only sounds were the creaking floorboards groaning under my weight and the distant rumble of thunder that seemed to echo not just outside, but within the very walls of the house. The hallway leading to Timmy's room was a labyrinth of shadows. A single bulb flickered precariously at the far end, casting shapes that danced on the peeling wallpaper. Cobwebs, thick and dusty, brushed my face like skeletal fingers as I navigated the gloom. The air grew colder with each step, a damp chill that seemed to seep from the floorboards themselves. Timmy's room was a nursery straight out of a forgotten fairy tale, albeit a twisted one, cobweb-laden rocking horses, a dusty dollhouse loomed in the corner, its miniature furniture askew, like the remnants of a child's tantrum frozen in time, despite the oppressive atmosphere, I knelt beside Timmy's bed, his gentle snores a beacon of normalcy in the unsettling stillness, I pulled out a book from my bag, its cheery cover a stark contrast to the room's gloom, as I began to read, my voice sounded hollow even to my own ears. Timmy stirred slightly at the sound, his eyes fluttering open for a moment. He blinked blearily, then a smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. Thank you, Miss Sarah, he mumbled, drifting back to sleep. Relief washed over me, momentarily pushing back the creeping dread. I continued reading, the words blurring on the page as my gaze kept straying to the shadowed corners of the room. Then, it started, a soft tapping sound. Rhythmic and deliberate, it seemed to come from the far wall, behind a heavy oak wardrobe that loomed like a silent sentinel. My heart hammered against my ribs, a frantic drum solo in the sudden stillness. The tapping persisted, growing louder with each insistent rap tap tap. My breath hitched in my throat, and I gripped the book tighter, its thin pages offering little comfort. My hand hovered over the phone in my pocket, calling Mrs. Blackwood now would mean an early exit, a lost job. The need for the money warred with the rising panic in my chest, taking a deep, shaky breath that did little to calm my thundering heart. I grabbed a heavy brass candlestick from the dresser. It felt reassuringly solid in my hand, a poor excuse for a weapon, but better than nothing. With each creaking step towards the hallway door, the tapping seemed to grow louder, more insistent. My mouth was dry, my throat constricted, reaching the doorknob. I hesitated. What if there was something on the other side, something unseen? Something malevolent? My hand trembled as I grasped the knob, the cold metal searing into my palm. Slowly, with excruciating slowness, I turned the knob. The rusty hinges groaned in protest, the sound scraping harshly on my already frayed nerves. I peeked through the crack, the flickering hallway light offering scant illumination. The hallway stretched before me, shrouded in darkness. The single bulb at the far end had inexplicably burned out, plunging the corridor into an inky blackness. The tapping had definitely come from this direction, but from where? A sudden gust of wind, seemingly coming from nowhere, slammed a door shut at the far end of the hallway. Panic surged through me, hot and suffocating. Taking a deep breath, I gripped the candlestick tighter and stepped into the hallway, pushing the door shut behind me with a thud that seemed to echo through the entire house. The hallway was a suffocating tunnel of darkness. The air hung heavy, thick with the scent of dust and something else, a metallic tang. Like old blood, pricked my nostrils, the wind howled outside, a mournful dirge that seemed to seep through the cracks in the boarded up windows. Terror warred with a desperate need for answers, the tapping had stopped, but a new, 
prickling sensation crawled up my spine, the feeling of being watched. I inched forward, the candlestick held out in front of me, its meager flame casting a wavering circle of light that danced on the peeling wallpaper. With each step, the floorboards groaned in protest, the sound magnified in the oppressive silence, the hallway seemed to stretch endlessly, the darkness swallowing the meager light cast by the candlestick. Just when I was about to turn back, defeated, a faint outline emerged from the shadows at the far end of the hallway. It was a doorway, barely a sliver visible against the encroaching darkness. This wasn't there before. Had the wind blown a door open? My breath hitched, the tapping. It had come from there. Reaching the doorway, I hesitated. The darkness within seemed to press against me, a tangible force resisting my approach. But then, a flicker of movement in the inky blackness. A dark shape shifted, solidifying for a split second before dissolving back into the shadows. My hand went numb, the candlestick clattering to the floor with a deafening clang. The darkness pulsed, a living thing, and I stumbled back, tripping over my own feet. Terror propelled me forward. I didn't dare look back. The memory of that fleeting silhouette burned into my mind. I just ran, heart pounding a frantic rhythm against my ribs, lungs burning with each desperate gasp for air. The sound of my own ragged breaths filled my ears, drowning out the creaking floorboards and the distant rumble of thunder. I didn't stop until I burst through the heavy oak door of the nursery, slamming it shut behind me with a resounding crash. Panting, I fumbled for the light switch, flooding the room with harsh, fluorescent light. The rocking horses and the dusty dollhouse seemed almost comical in the sudden brightness, a stark contrast to the chilling darkness I had just left, but the relief was short-lived. Timmy stirred in his bed, his eyes fluttering open. Miss, Sarah, he mumbled, his voice thick with sleep. What's wrong? There was no way I was staying here another minute. Every creak of the house, every gust of wind outside, sent shivers down my spine. I had to get Timmy and myself out of here. Now, get dressed, Timmy, I said my voice surprisingly steady, already gathering my things. Something came up, we have to leave. As we hurried down the stairs, I cast a nervous glance at the end of the hallway. The darkness seemed deeper there, heavier. Outside, the storm raged, the wind lashing the trees in a frenzy, but it felt almost welcoming compared to the suffocating darkness within the house. Timmy snuggled closer to me in the car, his warmth a comforting presence. Driving away, I couldn't help but steal a glance back at the house. It stood there, a hulking silhouette against the stormy sky. A flicker of light seemed to move in one of the upstairs windows, gone as quickly as it appeared. I slammed my foot on the accelerator, pushing the image out of my mind. There would be time to deal with the horrors I had witnessed later. Right now, all I cared about was getting Timmy and myself as far away from that house as possible. 